let's go ahead and dive into the, let's see, CFB off the radar pick them for week four. And brother, we're going to start off with Missouri heading to Boston College. Boston College, a one and a half point underdog at home, total of 58. Odds, of course, every week brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. There's a link in the description. You can sign up with that promo code, get a 125% deposit bonus. I'm telling you, a deal worth taking advantage of. Boston College, of course, no Phil Djokovic. Missouri, there have been holes with that defense. There has been some problems there. The Boston College defense, to me, I'm going to give you my pick on this. I'm taking Missouri, and I'm taking Missouri all day. My line on it was six. That Boston College defense is not good. They have played Temple's backup quarterback. They have played UMass's backup quarterback, and they have played whoever the quarterback is at Tollgate or Colgate. I, I don't trust Boston College. They've, they have seen nothing like they will see with Connor Basilak and those wide receivers. I trust Missouri to go in there and get this thing done. How do you feel about it? So, okay. We're having two different conversations here, but we're going the same road, okay? Okay. Is Do I think Missouri is a better football team than Boston College? Yes. Do I think Missouri should be favored in this game? Yes. I got Missouri winning this game. I'm picking Missouri in this thing. This, I am not besmirching the good name of what Boston College is doing right now. Man. No, Jeff okay? Halfley is this great. Is one of the better Boston, this is one of the better Boston College football teams we've seen in a decade, man. <laughs> I think they they're are really good. good. They're just not as good as Missouri. That's those are two different things. That's no, I I I believe that Jeff Halfley has done an absolutely magnificent job. But remember, they are without their starting quarterback. And no, well, and that's and that's the biggest thing. Them yes. losing their quarterback uh, against UMass was was an absolute game changer. Absolute game changer. Yes. Oh, I would have had them favored in this game if if it were not for Phil being out. So yeah, that changes no, the whole tough. thing. And so I do think that the, now I'll tell you this. I think that the number would have actually been closer to like 65 as far as the total goes had he been in there because I think he's worth that much. But well, uh, he's going to score. Yeah. There's no doubt he can find the end zone, baby. Yeah. Oh, especially against the Missouri defense. But I don't know that I trust Dennis uh, Grossell, I believe is the guy's name. So we're, we're both taking Missouri then, right? Yes. I like Missouri. I think, I did, hey, man, I think they can score, though. Dude, they, they've done an unbelievable job turning around the, you know, the, the the mentality of Boston College. Yeah, no, no, you're 100 percent right. The about issue that. is, is they'll they'll have no home field advantage. That's the downside. The Northeast just isn't going to show up for college football. I had to, so on Reddit uh, on the Reddit CFB page, I had several Boston College fans tell me that it is like Parents Weekend, and that there are going to be a ton like the game's almost sold out. So there will be okay. a bit of a home field advantage for them. All right, all right. I, I hope. Hang on now. I really hope so, man. That makes me happy. That makes me excited. My question is, is when I'm talking about selling the place out, I'm talking about getting rowdy. I ain't talking about your moms and your dad, okay? <laughs> That's I need, true. I need at least 25 to 30,000 18 to 25-year-olds making bad decisions that weekend, okay? That's what I need. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need 47-year-old pop up there, okay, get a couple of million lights in it and, and just getting a little <laughs> woo-hoo every now and then, okay? That's just not how it rolls. Like, no, we need something way better than that. Way better than that. I need, uh-huh. I need, I need more. I need more <laughs> than parents weekend. Cause that, that, that parents can sell some tickets out, but but mama and papa ain't going crazy now. I need somebody taking their shirts off. Now you you right you right. All right, let's let's move on to the next game here. Uh, we are moving to the Dallas Fort Worth rivalry here. SMU. I can't wait for this football oh, yeah. game. SMU and TCU. TCU a nine and a half point favorite. A total of sixty five and a half. Look, SMU six and one against the spread. Their last seven against TCU. The TCU secondary has got some holes, brother. There, there are problems back there that have not been fixed yet. Now, could they get fixed in this game? Absolutely. But man, I'm gonna tell you, I, I was looking earlier over at CFB stats. Tanner Mordecai, the mm-hmm. SMU quarterback, number three in the country as far as quarterback rating. I mean, he has been unbelievable. Do I trust that TCU is the significantly more talented team? Absolutely, I do. Uh, do I think that Gary Patterson has a little bit of a coaching edge on Sonny Dykes? Yes, I, I do. But do I think that SMU can keep this game close? I mean, there's a little bit of a, a tension going on because TCU had to cancel this game last year due to COVID issues, and SMU thinks they were running scared. So SMU really wants this game. I I think they can keep it within this number, man. I mean, it's it's down from what it was. I think it opened at 11. It's down to 9.5. 
I, I still think SMU can keep this within about a touchdown. My, my line on it was six. I'm going to take SMU. All right. So I love Sonny Dykes. I love both of these coaches, by the way. And, and I think this is, I'm excited for this game. But SMU just – they just took all they could from Louisiana State. It took every ounce of gumption they had to not get upset by a very mediocre football team. All right? That means – SMU, you talked about the holes in the defense of TCU. TCU might hang 50 on them, okay? It's true. It's true. I just I just trust Gary Patterson. All they need to do, I need Gary Patterson to make two stops. That's it. I need him to make two stops because I don't think SMU will make any. All right? And if Gary Patterson can come up with a way to find two stops in this football game, he's going to cover this line. He's going to beat them by 10 at least, if not by 14. Okay. Yeah, that's how the math is going to work out because SMU will not stop them. TCU won't punch. I, I bet the over-under in punch in this game. What do you think it might be? Three? If I gave you five over-under punch, go under? Yeah, I'd probably go under. <laughs> what if I gave you three? Would you go over or you go under? Are you, uh, three. Well, where would, that's, a, that's a tough number. Three and a half. Three, three and a half. Man, I still might go under if it's three and a half. I don't know that we're going to see a lot of football punch, man. <laughs> Kickers just ain't going to be out there a lot. No, you ain't wrong. You ain't wrong about that. When I saw La Tech drop 37 on this team, I thought, man, Sonny Dyke's going to have he, he's gonna have his problems with TCU rolling down. So here, here's my thought process on that. I told you on last week's show that weird things happen in Ruston, right? I, you, I, you, yes, you did say that. You so, did say that. So I don't know that I fully believe – that SMU is a bad football team just because of what happened when they were on the road in Louisiana. They're a bad football team, but I do think they're a bad defense. Has Sunday Dykes ever had a good defense in your life? Have you seen that? No, but he's got Jim Levitt as his defensive coordinator now, and he, they might not be set up just yet. But you know, I well, ain't gonna get set up this weekend. I don't think. I, I think you're probably right about that. <laughs> I think but Zach I'm, Evans I'm is gonna feel the I thought it was bigger than I thought it should have been. I yeah. was expecting this line to come out more than a touchdown, less than a field goal, which is, I guess, where it is now. But I was thinking seven and a half is what I was thinking the number was going to be. And so you're, you're even still, at nine and a half, I, I like it. Right, even at nine and a half, you're rolling TCU. I'm rolling SMU. Next game on the board, LSU. we got to talk about your Tigers real quick. You know, this is one of those that we could have put for most to gain or most to lose here. LSU is a two and a half point favorite in Starkville. They are nine and one against the spread of their last ten in Starville. Sorry, sorry, nine and one straight up, not against the spread. LSU, like this is one of those matchups. You you always talk about styles make fights, right? Sure. This is a matchup where I think LSU has a sizable advantage. I don't think their pass it should defense, favor us. Yes, it didn't last year, but it should favor us on what we do well and what they do poorly. Exactly. Mississippi State, not very good against the pass. They, I don't think that they will have a sizable advantage from their defensive line against LSU's offensive line. I don't believe that they will be able to take advantage of LSU's defensive line's woes, right? And now they do have a de- – LSU's got a defensive lineman that's out for the season now. Anthony – God, I can't remember his name right now. But either way, beyond the point, LSU is not good at defending the run. Mississippi State does not run the ball. Like, that's not going to be an issue – what I'm curious about is these short to intermediate passes that Will Rogers likes to throw. They don't have a really explosive passing game. They they kind of take forever to get down the field. But I also think that LSU's got some guys that can, you know, pin their ears back and get after the quarterback a little bit. I do think that LSU has an advantage in this game, and I think they're going to be pissed off after last year. I know everybody is talking about Mississippi State after what happened. They got hosed by the refs last week, blah, 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 blah. And that don't matter this week. Like, you cannot let the refs beat you two weeks in a row. I don't think it's going to matter. I think LSU is mad about what happened to them in their own house last year. I'm going to take LSU in this spot because, again, I think stylistically this matchup suits them. I think they're going to win this by at least a touchdown, maybe double digits. So, I hope you're right. I, I, I think you are right, by the way. I do think we're the better team. I think we should win. I think you're right. Everything you're saying, <clears throat> we can't run the ball with They can't, you know. They, it don't matter. They can't stop the pass. We we throw the football a lot. So that's what we do. They can't run the ball. We can't stop the run, but we sure can stop the pass. And and that's what they do. And so everything matches up to where to where we should be the better team and we should win and, and cover this game. It, it scares me 
you talk about the most to lose. We don't win this game. I told you there's a world where we don't win an SEC game this year. Okay. I, I think possible. that world still exists. Yeah, no, it's, really it's definitely there. I mean, because State could absolutely come out and, and have some kind of new game plan. They, Your defensive backs may still not be able to cover their uh, wide receivers. Who knows? But the way that it has shaped up thus far this season, I, all of all of LSU's weaknesses, State can't take advantage of. So, at, at least from yeah. what we have seen thus far. So We yeah, have to get this win, and we have to get Arkansas. And then we got to pull a rabbit out of our ass somewhere else because I think all the other teams in the SEC that we play this year are better than us. LSU, just, hey, you're, maybe you're, not Kentucky, maybe not Kentucky. Maybe we can just out athlete Kentucky, but Kentucky's no joke, man. No, no, they're, they're, they're absolutely not. Absolutely no they're joke. They're really good right but, now. Right now, Kentucky's better than us. The Bayou Bengals hosting Auburn next week, so I mean, this is not exactly a look ahead spot for Mississippi State, but. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm with you. Both of us taking LSU minus two and a half. Clemson heads to Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm kind of stoked about this. We we've talked a little bit about this in the preview earlier, but NC State seven and one against the spread. Their last eight at home. However, they will not have Peyton Thomas on the. Or sorry, Peyton Wilson. God, I keep messing up his name. Peyton Wilson, the the all star linebacker. They're not going to have him. He's out for the rest of the season. Fagan. The safety, I, I think those are the two best defensive players that they've got, both of them out for the year. That's going to be a big problem here. It, Clemson just has not looked very good. Clemson, uh, what did I say, a 10-point favorite here? I had them actually yes, as a, I had them as a 14-point favorite. I, I do wonder about this. Like This feels like it could be really low scoring. 2015 was the last time that NC State had a real shot to win a game against Clemson. In 2016, it was a 38-31 ball game. And that one was in Raleigh. I I do wonder about this because Clemson has blown them out two straight times. They didn't play last year uh, because of all the the weird ACC stuff, the way they reshaped their schedule to uh, to fit in Notre Dame. But I, I do feel like Dave Doran is a good enough coach to be able to keep this thing close so long as Clemson doesn't just bust out, right? Like, DJ Uyunglele has been awful passing the football. And... And if that continues, then yes, they can absolutely keep this within 10. I tend to believe that Clemson will find a way to score. They will find a way to look better. The circumstances surrounding their three games thus far, uh, far really weird, really weird stuff. They got all the talent in the world. I think they're going to find a way to figure it out. I, I'm going to take the Clemson minus 10 here, but I, I don't feel great about it. Like this, this is not one of my, you know, official uh, gambling picks, but, but I do, I will take Clemson minus 10 here. Well, this is one of my official gambling picks, baby, and I am taking the wool pack. Let me tell you something. When somebody has bullied you, as long as Clemson has bullied the ACC, you take that opportunity to kick them when they are down. You take advantage of everything you can. They're going to pull out all the stops because this might be their last shot at beating them for a decade. Okay? So, you take this chance. I think their fans believe it. I think the students believe it. I think the the crowd is going to be crazy. I something is this defense is going to make Uyungle really, really uncomfortable. You become one dimensional in college football, big boy college football. You can get shut down by anybody. True. Okay. And I do believe that Clemson has become one dimensional. Now they got to find some offense because the boys on the other side of the football. For Clemson and that coach on the other side of football for Clemson, I believe is one of the best coaches in all of college football. Okay, I've said that multiple times, and at some point in time, you got to find a way to score. But if you can score, I think this is your game. I think this is your you're at home. You're going to have a chance to to to, to do something special that your school and these students will remember for a long time. And I think it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, Tim Beck. I I do think I I do trust that he'll be able to get that something something going for offense with Devin Leary and that bunch. So yeah, I, I'm going to take Clemson just because it just seems it's so weird that they that they have looked as bad as they have. I've got a feeling that they got something up their sleeve for this one, but it, would it surprise me if NC State finds a way to keep this one close into the fourth quarter? Absolutely not. Uh, would it surprise me if NC State wins? 
Yeah, I think that might surprise me a little bit. <laughs> well, I'm going to have a little bit of money on the money line. You know that. This is going to be one of my one of my underdog specials this weekend. Hey, you you don't They're bet dogs list. without putting a little little money line. I know how you roll. No, I don't. I don't. I don't usually. So. Well, and speaking of dogs, let's move into another ACC tilt here and. The Louisville Cardinals are headed to Florida State. Florida State, a a one-and-a-half point underdog at home, 61-and-a-half. Again, the lines brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. You can, of course, click the link in the description. Go ahead and get signed up over there. Use the promo code NCAAF2021 for 125% deposit bonus up to $2,500. Louisville, four-and-one against the spread in their last five against Florida State. And they seem to really find something against UCF. They've got the rest advantage here. They have an extra day of rest after beating UCF at home on Friday night last week. Florida State went on the road to Wake Forest and got absolutely pummeled without the guys in their offensive line that they had to start the season against Notre Dame. They have been dreadful. Absolutely awful. McKenzie Milton, as as much as we have loved the story and everything, I mean, his average yards per pass is like five I mean, it, it, there's there's no explosive passing game. The running game without that offensive line has basically been shut down. Jordan Travis is somewhat injured. The defense is bleh. And and while I would like to say, yeah, this is they're going to come out pissed off. They they shouldn't have been beaten by that many. Da, da, da. Like Wake Forest took them behind the woodshed, man. I I'm going against Florida State again here. Give me Louisville. Like I, even on the road, I think Louisville found something last week. I I think that they are going to come out fired up for this game. I think Florida State has made, Florida State may win two games this year, man. All right. So some of this is a won't, and some of this is a feel, okay? Okay. I want Mike Norvell to be better than this. I, I need Florida State to find something here, okay? But but here's the other part of this. I think last week, every, I've heard you saying that. I've heard a lot of other people in college football saying, move a found something, move a found something. And I don't really found anything. I have seen too many weeknight football games where the home team just plays far above their caliber. All right? It happens every year. It happens all the time. And I don't want to overreact to that. I don't think this global team is great. I think they've got a lot of flaws. I think they played above their head. And I think one team in here is desperate and the other team just celebrated for a week. That's what I – and, and I'm going to go with the desperate team. I feel like such a moron taking Florida State right now. I just I, – I, it, it seems stupid, but I'm going to do it because I think it's the right thing to do. I really do. I'm going to take the team that's desperate for a win when the other team just got a huge win on national TV. I, I'm going to do that. It, it, it makes sense. It absolutely makes sense. I, I feel where you're coming from. Uh, I am going to go the other way, though. So, let's let's move to the Liberty Bowl. UTSA, the UT San Antonio Roadrunners, are headed into Memphis, and they will be playing the Memphis Tigers. Both teams, three and up. Both teams have a win over a Power 5 school. Memphis, of course, beat Mississippi State last week in controversial fashion. And UTSA went on the road and beat Illinois uh, just a couple weeks ago. And sincere McCormick. Rocking and rolling, running the football. Frank Harris Jr., the quarterback for UTSA, he is looking really, really good as well. I I will also tell you this. Seth Hennigan, the freshman quarterback for Memphis, when when Grant Gunnell went down with an injury, who was supposed to be the starting quarterback to transfer in from Arizona, when he went down, I thought this season was shot for Memphis. And they, Seth Hennigan is now the number 23 quarterback in the country per uh, quarterback rating. And he has looked outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. This Tigers offense has got some heavy hitters on it. They've got some playmakers. I worry about this defense. I don't think that they can stop the run, which was not an issue against Mississippi State. But they they certainly have had issues. I'm, I'm curious here. My line was six. Memphis is favored by three, total of 66 and a half. My line initially was Memphis minus six. Man, I have gone back and, and watched... So I watched UTSA against Middle Tennessee, and I went through and watched you know the the, the highlight plays, all that kind of stuff, just to, to see how that game went. And of course, I watched UTSA against Illinois. I, I UTSA has covered five straight games, and their defense can match up with Memphis's offense. I think 
And I don't know that Memphis can stop the running game of UTSA. So I I think I'm going to go UTSA here, plus the three. Like I, that That's against my own number, but I, I kind of feel like UTSA has got something cooking here. I'll, uh, I'll roll with Jeff Trailer and the boys. Trust your numbers, trust the math, trust the Tigers, baby. Memphis is going <laughs> to find some magic in the Liberty Bowl. I can, I can buy it. I can buy it. I, I mean, those playmakers, man, that, that's what scares you is at any point, Calvin Austin. They're just so third. explosive. I yeah. don't, they can score from any point in the field. If you got them at their own half-yard line, don't worry. They can take that thing 99 and a half yards in one snap. Yes. Yes, they really can. They can. So I, I'm going to trust UTSA. You're rolling Memphis. Hey, this is the first pick em where we have really kind of gone head-to-head on most of these, and, and I like it. Yeah, we've gone head-to-head on a lot, yeah. So yeah. I think, uh, let's see, it looks four out of the six already we have gone head-to-head on, different than, than the last couple of weeks. Uh, last week, we only had two that we disagreed on, so this is this is a little bit better, a little, little more argumentative, I guess. I, I appreciate that. I don't, know, I don't know that it's better. You that, know, well, you never we know. If we won all those ones that we agreed on last week, then that's fine. <laughs> you, uh, you're not wrong. All right, we got a few more here. Uh, Rutgers headed to Michigan. This line has has just gotten absurd. Michigan minus twenty this and a half. This line is weird. Yes. This line stinks like shit. Well, my line on it was Michigan minus seventeen. It, it's sitting at twenty and a half. Uh, the total is forty nine and a half. Look, Rutgers is five and zero oh against the spread in their last five on the road. Michigan looks absolutely legit right now. Just, I mean, I, I can't even explain what they, they're not passing the ball, but they haven't had to. I will tell you this, numbers-wise, this line makes perfect sense. Like, it absolutely makes sense. I know all the math adds up. Yes. I, Man, I'm, I'm I telling like you, I, I think there's – so 65% of the uh, the bets and a little more of the money are on Rutgers right now, and the line keeps going the opposite direction. I'm, I'm going to take Michigan. I, as long as it's under three touchdowns here, 20 and a half, give me Michigan because I think they are going to – this is a thing that Harbaugh does, Right. Whenever Rutgers starts to pick up a little bit in recruiting, he just comes in and molly whops them. Like you remember that seventy eight yeah. to nothing win? Like he understands how important recruiting New Jersey is to Michigan football. This seems like one of those spots where he is not going to ease up off the gas pedal. I, I think they're gonna score a ton of points here. And I don't think Rutgers their offense, it is not good. Like under any metric that you can come up with, they have not been good. And I love Sean Gleason and I love how how crazy eclectic their offense is but they have not been good this year uh, give give me michigan minus 20 and a half here i think they lay it on them so i think you're right i think that's so I, I i hate this game i hate this game because i don't like watching both these teams i like that Rutgers is crazy and weird and plays different football okay and it's not a triple option or it's not a week they just their their entire offense is tricked up this is all it is yes yes <laughs> um I like I like what Shiano's doing there, and I want to reward them with seeing them in this. But I really like Harbaugh. I like Harbaugh a lot. My first thought was it's too damn many points. It's just too many points. But you're right. You're right. At, at three touchdowns, I could see him winning it by three touchdowns. I do think the line is pretty damn close to where we're going to get. Yeah, I I mean I will tell you that I I think they win this. I mean, going away. Like, I it, I think it'll be more than three touchdowns, but the fact that I can get it under three touchdowns, I'm I'm all in on yeah. that. So, all right, so that'll that'll move us in. We got uh, just a few more here. Kansas State heads to Stillwater, and they are a five-and-a-half-point underdog to the Cowboys. Oklahoma State, total of 46-and-a-half. Kansas State is five-and-one against the spread in their last six in Stillwater. Will Howard looked pretty good against Nevada last week. This line has come down, by the way. I think it was over a touchdown, uh, or it might have been right at a touchdown at opening. And and now, of course, it has dropped. My line on it was actually Oklahoma State minus three. I think the biggest thing we got to pay attention to, basically, once kickoff gets here, is is are the Oklahoma State wide receivers actually going to play in this game? Because they didn't against Boise <laughs> State, and they found a way to get that win anyway, but it wasn't because of scoring. Like, Oklahoma State's defense is really good, but, man, Chris Kleiman's defense has been really stingy this year. They have been really, really good. I I still think five and a half is too many points, man. I, I'm going to roll with Kansas State here. I feel good about this bunch. I don't know what it is. Even without Skylar Thompson, like, I, I still think, you know, 
you got Deuce back there. You got guys that can make plays. I think they'll be able to score enough. I don't know that they win the game, but this certainly feels like it'd be a field goal game either way, right? Yes, I think this was supposed to be a close game. I think that's too many points. And I, I think both these teams look a lot alike, by the way. I think the way they're playing, I, I just think they look a lot alike. It's a, another of them can pass the football right now. Like, at all. No, they both run the football, and they both play great defense. Like, yes. great, outstanding defense. A uh, total of 46 and a half, man. It, it's not a lot of points, but uh, luckily we're not having to pick over-unders here. We're just, you know, going against the spread. I, I do think uh, 46 and a half lets you know that this could end up being a game that ends in the teens. So <laughs> this could this could easily be yeah. like a 17-13 ball game. So would yeah. not surprise and if, me. And if you're going to have a game that low scoring, you, you can't lay six points. Exactly. You just can't, either way, you just can't. It doesn't matter who it is. You just can't lay six points in a game where, where there won't be, you know, 35 points scored. True. True. Nebraska heads to Michigan State. They're going up to East Lansing to face off against Sparty and the bunch. We talked very highly of Mel Tucker and the Spartans last week. Peyton Thorne has been playing uh, his rear end off number eight in the country in quarterback efficiency. He is lighting them up. Lighting him up right now. He's at, what is it, nine touchdowns? Yeah, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions. And Kenneth Walker III, of course, has been an absolute playmaker. At Michigan State has looked awesome. They are the biggest surprise on the season, I believe, uh, currently. However, Nebraska, eight and one against the spread, their last nine against Michigan State. And as I was looking through stats and looking through everything this week, I'm kind of wondering if Michigan State has not just taken advantage of beating really bad teams. And Nebraska, yes, the Illinois game is concerning, but they played really well against Oklahoma last week. And, of course, before that, they got a big win against Buffalo, looked really good in that game. And, you know, against Fordham, looked terrible early, but ended up winning that one like 52-7, to seven, something like that. I, I kind of wonder if Nebraska isn't a little bit better than what we've been giving them credit for, and we just all jumped the shark on it a, a touch too soon when they lost to Illinois early. I, I'm i going to roll with Nebraska plus the five here. Now, I don't feel great about it because betting on Scott Frost and, and Adrian Martinez here lately has not been insanely profitable at all. But I do think that they are, this, these are two evenly matched teams. And I think Adrian Martinez is not as bad as we have made him out to be. I'm, I'm rolling with the Cornhuskers here. All right. So I'm going to do what we did with the... Uh... Boston College team, okay? I agree with you, but but I still think Nebraska is a bad football team. Okay, right? okay. Here's where here's where I think this is where Nebraska can either keep this thing close and or win the game outright. And and God, I'm 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 really thinking about putting them in my underdog special. I never thought I'd say that all year. <laughs> it, it's it's coming down to the fact that. This is a huge letdown spot. For the first time all year, the entire country is looking at Sparty saying, hey, these guys can play. And they've been feeling themselves. And they've been walking around with a big swinging dick on campus all week long after coming back from beating up on Miami. And I, it, I just I worry about this. Is, we, we've seen this in college football. Just massive wins followed by just stupid, unexplainable losses they they could be they could be playing Kent State here and I would be thinking the exact same thing you know they could be playing a really good FCS team a bit, uh, yeah FCS team and I'd be thinking the same thing here so this isn't that I think Nebraska is good maybe they are and I'm just hating too much this is I I just think this is perfect letdown yeah that's that was kind of my thought process here is Michigan State has feasted. Like, we all thought Miami was pretty good, and maybe they're not. Like maybe. Uh, we, we did not. We did not. Hang on. Let's be <laughs> real careful about that. We thought Miami was going to be trash because we didn't understand where the Miami love was coming from. True, true. Now, you, you're not wrong about that. Uh, Michigan State does have Western Kentucky next week. After that, they have road trips to Rutgers and to Indiana before a bye week heading into the Michigan game. So, uh, it's not if, a look ahead if spot. If they get past this, they'll be undefeated going into Mich- uh, going into Indiana at least. Yeah, yeah, I think they should be able to handle Rutgers even on the road. Nebraska, as far as they are concerned, they've got Northwestern next week at home. 
again, this isn't a look-ahead spot for either team. Like, they are focused on each other. I think this could be a pretty even matchup. You're, you're, riding, you're riding Nebraska as well. I'm, I'm taking the Cornhuskers, and I'm strongly considering making them a money, uh, money line special. I can, I can totally get with that. I can totally get with it. All right, two more. North Carolina heading to Georgia Tech. And, hey, uh, you know, they're a 12-point favorite at Georgia Tech. And this game is not being played at, at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Or, or whatever it's called now. I think it's still Bobby Dodd. Georgia Tech, 12 and a half point underdog here. Total of 63 and a half. North Carolina, two and five against the spread their last seven as a road favorite. And the game is at Mercedes Benz Stadium. So it's in a dome. It's on a fast track. North Carolina got things absolutely rolling in the second half against Virginia last week. Georgia Tech played really close with Clemson. Got real close to getting a win there. But I don't think that that's exactly a uh, a good look at what this team is. I don't think Georgia Tech is very good, especially without Jeff Sims, their quarterback. I, not that the backup has been bad. I, I just don't think that Georgia Tech is a good enough football team to be able to keep up or keep pace with North Carolina. And I, I my line on this was 16. I, I'm, I'm able to get it at 12 and a half. Like, yes, absolutely. Like, I, I, can, I can get North Carolina at under two touchdowns. Give me North Carolina. I I think we might have written them or written them off a little too early. Uh, Lane Stadium is always difficult to go play in. I don't think it's that difficult to go play in Mercedes Benz Stadium against Georgia Tech. Give me give me North Carolina here. Yeah, North Carolina, North Carolina, big Georgia Tech's not a good football team, which is why I am betting against Clemson as well. Yeah, yeah, Georgia Tech's not a good football team. <laughs> They're just not right now. Uh, I do hate that they lost Sims in that first game. That that just made, it, God, it made the rebuild so much more difficult because he is the one that that had a bunch of offers from other places. You know, had the offer from Florida State, et cetera, and Norville came in, told him, "Nah, we we don't want you." Georgia Tech got him. They were kind of building their offense around him, and now he's gone. I I just I hate it. I really hate it. If they find a way to win this ball game, though. I mean, what Jeff Collins is doing there, like he, this will be a massive, massive recruiting win, but I don't see it. I, I think North Carolina may win this by three touchdowns. So uh, I will uh, I will certainly roll with the Tar Heels on that. And finally, one last one. I wanted to make sure we got uh, one of the late-night games. Cal at Washington. Uh, Washington is a 7.5-point favorite. This actually opened at 9. Total of 46.5. Again, everything brought to you by BetUS, where the game begins. Click the link in the description. Go sign up there. Cal has won two straight against Washington. They didn't get to play last year, of course, all the COVID protocols and everything. But they they have won and covered three of the last five against the Huskies here. Cal, here is the biggest mismatch in the game. And I don't I don't know what to make of it because obviously we don't have a large sample size just yet. Cal is number two, uh, 22 in the country in yards per rush. Washington number 98 in yards per rush defense. Now, a lot of that is because they got absolutely smoked by Michigan but Montana was able to run on it a little bit. Like I, I, I think Washington may just not be a very good football team. Now they might have figured it out last week against Arkansas State, but man, you know Wilcox has had their number for quite a while, and and yep. I wonder if he doesn't do it again. My line on this was five. If I'm able to get it at seven and a half over a touchdown, give me Cal. Get Cal plus seven and a half is where I'm rolling. That's right. Cal plus seven and a half. That's that's the answer. And and this will be on the money line special as well. I I think Cal Cal's still a really good defensive football team. I yes. think Washington's struggling to find a way to put points on the board. I don't think that what happened last week is an anomaly and 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 in their back or whatever. I think sorry, I do think it was an anomaly. I don't think they're back. I don't think they found anything special. I I still think they're not I don't trust the team. No, and, Arkansas and, uh, and, State's defense is putrid. Like it is no, awful. Just got off. Yes. Yeah. It's so, it's not like Cal. I am. I am <laughs> no, I'm I'm in on the Cal Bears. I think they got a shot to win this football game. Yeah. No, I'm I'm the same way as you. I'm the same way as you. All right. So we started out having four of the first six games different, and we closed out by agreeing on the last five. So <laughs> you and I see the world a whole lot alike, my friend. A whole lot alike. All right, recap on this. I've got Missouri, SMU, LSU, Clemson, Louisville, UTSA, Michigan, Kansas State, Nebraska, North Carolina, and Cal. 
And Chris is taking Missouri, TCU, LSU, NC State, Florida State, Memphis, Michigan, Kansas State, Nebraska, UNC, and Cal. I like it, my friend. I like it. All right, I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and let you get out of here, and then I will finish up the show. And, uh, and yeah, man, I'm, I'm hoping for, uh, for some more winners this weekend. So I tell everybody, yeah, by man. the way, go and check out Chris's show Saturday morning. What time is it on Saturday? Saturday, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern. That's YouTube, what I'm talking about. Live. YouTube SBR Live. Fix. SBR Fix. There we go. All right, so go and check it out. Make sure you are subscribed if you have not already. My brother, I will, uh, I will talk to you later on. Thank you, sir. Be good, buddy. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.